Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I believe that today we are going to have an amazing service. I don't know where you are in life, but one thing you need to know is that God loves you. God sees you. You are not forsaken. You have not been forgotten. So I believe that at the end of the day, you are going to be blessed. Whether your children are here or maybe they're out of state or maybe you haven't even gotten a phone call and saying happy Mother's Day. But I'm going to tell you who's telling you happy Mother's Day, our God. So happy Mother's Day to you. It is so awesome to be with you guys here today. We are excited for the service that we have. And, you know, Mother's Day is one of those holidays that, you know, bring a lot of people together. So it is so good to see you guys here. We are a church that truly believes in families. We believe in moms. We believe in our children. We believe in our dads. But today is about moms. So we're going to talk to moms, okay? Don't get offended if I don't talk to you today, okay? Because it's mom's day. It's my day. I told my kids it's our weekend today. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Um, you know, Brave is our women's ministry here at Elevate Church, and we so love you ladies. Can, you, can, can I just tell you that? We love you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Awesome. I think some of you guys need to go out and get some iBrew coffee after this, okay? Yeah. Um, but we have put this together with our fearless, amazing mama of the house. Oh, shout. Call her Pastor Virginia, a.k.a. Okay. mom, a.k.a. mama. AKA Mama. Yeah. Um, but tell us, Pastor Virginia, why do you, you're, you're sharing the stage today. Yes. Why are you sharing it with these amazing ladies? And what is the reason behind the name of beauty for Mother's Day? Yes, the reason, um, every year at the beginning of the year, I always pray. You know, it's May, but I always pray to the Lord, okay, what do you want to do for Mother's Day? Because it's a big thing. It's a big thing to me, and as uh, leading brave, which is women, whether you're a mother here, you're a nurturer, whether you're probably your spiritual mom. So I thought, okay, what do I do this year? And I was waiting and praying to God, what do you want us to do today, uh, t this year? And he wouldn't release me, and I saw a panel, and I'm like, well, that's very unconventional. Uh, that's not what we do. Uh, but then I thought, Brave is hosting it. And I believe that you all, you not only need to hear from me, you need to hear from other mothers because we're in different seasons. We experience the same things, you know, like we get upset, we get disappointed, we get, you know, everything that motherhood brings within the joy. But I think it's important, it's important that you get to hear from different perspective. Like not all our kids are the same. Not do we, we encounter different trials and tribulations and you need to know how do we do it? How do we stay in faith through our season as mothers? So I believe that you're gonna be blessed with our team. And the reason I decided to go for beauty. Uh, Beauty, and you see it there, one of the things that I know and I love about God that everything in his eyes is beautiful. Everything. Uh, when your children are going cray-cray, he thinks it's beautiful. <laughs> and it's seriously because he is the one who is, sees everything through his own eyes. He never, God is not hopeless. He's not disappointed. He's not moved by our failures. He's not moved because we didn't do our best. You know what? You did what you could. Yeah. And we need to celebrate that because as mothers, I believe that we're so hard on ourselves. And today we're going to talk about the beauty of God, which is the grace of God. And the grace of God is messy. Amen. A messy. Uh, moms, you know, you remember the, uh, the diaper blowouts when the babies were young and then the messes, right? You, we imagine feeding our children for the first time, you know, those those peas or those carrots that you so lovingly prepared, and then they're all over the place, right? And then our kids grow up, and then it's a contention with their rooms, right? You know, messy, messy motherhood. And, you know, after that, you know, they grow up, and, and they're in high school, and it's the messes of relationships and grades and all that good stuff. And then after that, it's college. And then, you know, in college, it brings a whole new thing because now your kids are pretty much adults. You know, in the legal system, they're adults at 18, but, you know, they're, they're, their brains are still developing, so they're not really adults. But how do you do that, you know, and how can we call any of that beautiful when it's so M-E-S-S-Y, you know? So we actually are going to hear, we're going to get to introduce our first uh, panelist today, which is Sogo Pule. 
Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. My name is Sogol Pulley, and I'm a mess. <laughs> um, I'm a mother of three beautiful children. I have young ones. I have a six-year-old Micah, a, a four-year-old Joshua, a two-year-old Layla. God bless her. And um, my, I, my husband and I, we've been married for nine years this July. I did it. Yes. Um, yeah. And if I could say anything about being messy is that my house is a mess. My sink is a mess. Everything. My car is a mess. Actually, no, my car is kind of clean right now. Um, but yes, I am a messy mom. Wow. Nice to meet you, messy yes. mom. Yes. <laughs> All right, Ann, let's talk to you. Yeah, um, my name is Ann Crew. I have been, um, well, first, I'm a business owner, a wife, and a mother of 25 years, um, and a Mimi of just six months. So Aww. I'm really happy about that. Um, oh, he's not up there yet. Um, my kids are, five of them are grown adults, and so they range from age 25 to 20. Um, and yeah, do the math, run right after the other. And then I have an 11-year-old as well. So that's, wait till you hear the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I've awesome. got and I'd like to point out that you are, you know, a mom of a blended family as well. So yes. they're they are all yeah, your children. Yeah, we were blended when yes. they were very little. So um, that was a blessing because we got, they got to grow up together. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, awesome. now Pastor Regina, we know her as a pastor, but we're going to get to know you today as a mom. Yes, today I'm wearing the hat of a mom. Yeah. So what do you want me to say? Okay, so I have, I have two wonderful children. I have Alexis, which she is 24 years old. Do you know my daughter? The one who sang that beautiful song. And I have my wonderful son, and he's 20 years old. Uh, and you're asking, how is that possible when she looks 30? <laughs> it is the grace of God. <laughs> and a good cream, and I'm not going to tell you that's rest, but... Um, but I enjoy, one of the good things that I've always enjoyed is being a mother. I, through the good, good years, uh, you know, strange years, right? Because when you're children, we always have to be evolving as our children are growing. And I have to say that I've always enjoyed every season of my kids, whether I was crying or smiling, I have always enjoyed them. And to me, I feel like that God has just, um, I feel honored that God would trust me and trust me with two treasures. So I'm pretty happy about that. Awesome. Well, you get to see us here today. Our hair is done. Our makeup is done. We have our nice shoes on. Um, but this isn't, this isn't what motherhood is, right? Right, moms? Am I right here? Yeah. This what are you is talking about? <laughs> I wear high heels at home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I come up as soon as I come off the stage. Um, yeah, but no, what, what, what Brave is about is that we are raw and we are real. So yes. you, today you're going to hear some rawness, some realness, and we hope that you get to take something away because behind every woman here is a story, and it's a story of what God has done for us. So we're going to get to hear that. We're going to start with you, and Share with us what God has done for you in your life. Yeah, um, I have some notes. Um, so I mentioned that I have five young adult children, and um, they went ahead and moved. Oops, thank you. They, oh, wow, that does make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so in, within an 18-month span, they had all moved out one by one, completely left me, um, I wouldn't say heartbroken, but almost just lost, like my laundry, my, my washer is giant. <laughs> and so I went from washing three loads a day to once a week. It was every little detail mm -hmm. just was changed. And so um, I wanted to talk and share about one of my children moved out, and he moved out in a spirit of rebellion. Um, and because he moved out in that way, he uh, decided to leave the church. And then that progressed to um, leaving God altogether. Mm. And that left me heartbroken. I had worked so hard, and even though I knew it wasn't about me, we do put in time and energy bringing them to church and trying to raise them up the right way. Um, and then after he moved out for a while, the accusations came from him about my parenting and um, just how things happened. And he was in disagreement about all of my tactics <laughs> on parenting. And it, I began to doubt it myself. Um, and as I shared with some family and friends, they were questioning me too. And I thought, well, if these people I love and trust are questioning me, then maybe I did make a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have done this or that. And um, that all led <clears throat> to worry and to anxiety. I had sleepless nights, uh, stomach aches, headaches, 
it, it was exhausting. It was just um, too much for one woman to bear. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to do it all on my own. And so as I was reading and praying, I just felt convicted to surrender. And so um, I went ahead and surrendered. I uh, cried the ugly cry. I cried my lashes right off my face. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. The more I tried to reach out to him, the worse it got. Every word I tried, I came with like a speech and it was, it just made things even uglier. So I told the Lord, I can't do this anymore. I need your help. You love him more than I love him. He's your kid more than he's my kid. And I trust you. I'm going to trust you. Um, I'm saying this nice and clean, no tears, but I, it was ugly. That night, I believe there was a shift in what was about to happen. That night that I surrendered my situation to the Lord, everything changed. God started moving on my behalf um, within this situation. So I just remember John 3.30, and it states, he must be greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Mm -hmm. So soon after that, peace came over me. Um, I was able to rest. My smile came back. And the resentment that I thought would be there forever, it left me. Mm. And that took up so much of my mind space. I chose to believe that what God had said to me was true. I had heard God speak through <clears throat> a program here called Reveal. I had heard God speak through his word. And I had heard God speak through even just a cousin that I visited in another state. And God said, I am pursuing him. All you need to do is trust me. So Philippians 4, 6 through 7 states, do not be anxious for anything or worry about anything, but in everything, in every circumstance, every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known, made to, uh, known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures a mom's heart, that peace which transcends all of our understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, it's yours. So my son then, as God started to move, he called me. Three weeks later, I was like blown away. And he said that he wanted to come and visit. So as I chose to let God pursue him, it freed me from trying to control the situation. Um, and so it did come to fruition. He did come and visit, um, and he, he brought a wife and a baby with him. <laughs> they knocked on our door. We, we hadn't met them. I wasn't really too aware of the situation. <laughs> um, and then during that week he was with us, I was very nervous about bringing him to church. Um, <clears throat> but his wife showed me the outfit that she had bought for the baby, his first church outfit. And I was blown away. Um, they did attend church here with me on Sunday and my family. And I was just in, I was in worship and I was blown away by God's faithfulness. Um, and so I wanted to um, let you know that 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Above all, have fervent and unfailing love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. It overlooks unkindness, um, rebellion in a child, and it unselfishly seeks the best of others. Because I chose to trust God about the situation, it enabled me to love my son and to fall in love with his wife and my grandbaby. Awesome. Thank you for letting me share. Yes, that is beautiful. Let me tell you something, mamas, don't stop praying, don't stop loving. If you are here today and your child is out there and it's out of control, do not worry. And I love what that scripture says, you constantly bring your prayers up to God. We can choose to constantly complain about our situation or we can choose to constantly bring that prayer up to God. And I, you know, your son can't be with you, you know, today here to testify, which I believe that one day he definitely will. But I am here as a result of my mom's prayer. I was a 19 year old that left my house rebelliously, you know, because of I, I was S-T-U-P-I-D. <laughs> you know, I thought I knew it all at 19. Just my brain say had it. A, yeah, stupid, right? I was stupid. It was yeah, so yeah. just, you know, out of, out of 
hurt and pain, you know, all that, all that good stuff that happens. And so I left my house. I said, you know, fine, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to do it on my own. I'll do it on my own. I'll do it by myself. And then I fell flat on my face, but I couldn't come back to my mom because I was so shameful. And because I thought that she was going to hate me, I thought that she was going to you know, turn me away. So I love what, to hear what you say, that when he came back, you welcomed him with open arms. That's our God. Yes. If God does that for us, let's do it for our children. Yes. And let God handle that. And something else that you said is that we are all his children. That's something that is so hard for me to understand because I'm like, my babies are my babies. They're my <laughs> babies, God. And he's like, no, they were mine first. Yeah. So we need to understand that at some point, that, not at some point, at every point, that all of us and even our children are God's children. Yes. Amen. Awesome. So Sogol, talk to us. I am way on the other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I have little kids, um, and I never wanted to be a mom. I knew I wanted to be married, and I knew that <laughs> kids were going to come eventually, but I wasn't the individual that was like, I want babies, and this mm -hmm. is what their names are going to be, and this is what my nursery theme is. <laughs> I think when I found out I was pregnant with Micah, I cried, not like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant, you did it, Lord. It was like, really, God? <laughs> really? And then Micah came into this world, and Micah was, oh my gosh, he was the easiest baby under the sun. Like, sleep was easy, he ate, he, he did everything just well and excellent. So in my head, I kind of had it figured out, like, okay, this is, we could do this. This is good. So then we went in for another one. <laughs> And Joshua, Joshua is relentless, and I pray that he is relentless after God all the days of his life. <laughs> um, and he, he made me question. He made me question life. He made me question his life. <laughs> he made me question. And how old so, is he? Joshua is four. <laughs> <laughs> and he is a powerful four, okay? Remember, I am his mother. <laughs> He's power four. Yes, power four. Um, and, you know, it really, it really doesn't feel good saying I never wanted to be a mom. You know, but that's the reality of it. Postpartum was very real. It wasn't real with Micah because he was just so easy. But when you throw in the second one, it was, it's very real. The, the, the depression, the heaviness, the I can't do this, all of those things were my reality and they were real and it hurt and it didn't feel good and it questioned my identity it made me question my marriage his faithfulness if you knew my husband he's the worst liar ever <laughs> you know so he could never hide anything like that but th th those things happened and then you know i learned to kind of like get through it and all those things and then and then came layla and i definitely i I love Layla, you know, and she's <laughs> amazing, and she's two, and she's beautiful, and yeah. she's exactly 100% my daughter. That apple did not fall far from the tree <laughs> at all. And I look at her sometimes, and I go, oh, my gosh, everything that you do, I don't like it, but you're going to be an amazing adult. <laughs> <laughs> and, but when she I – was, I was in denial, I think four months – I was pregnant, by month five, I turned to Pastor Virginia, I was like, Pastor Virginia, I'm pregnant. Like, and you could tell, like, by this point, okay, you can't hide it anymore. Like, mm -hmm. I, she was in me, and I didn't want her in me, mm -hmm. because I felt like she was an interruption to my life. She was an interruption to my plan. She was an interruption to this thing that I wanted to get the show going. Every time I wanted to get the boat and the show going, there was a kid. There was another <laughs> kid. There was another kid. And... Because I had those thoughts, I never enjoyed the nitty gritty. I never enjoyed the moments. I never enjoyed like, oh, they took their first step and oh, <laughs> they love avocado. <laughs> and then at the same time, I had this perception of what a mom needs to be. Because you, you drop the kids off at school, right? And all these moms are in their exercise outfits <laughs> and their their SUVs. Yeah, and but they don't exercise, which and is they, where the... And they, it's perception, <laughs> though. It's what they look like. They look yeah. like they're going to go work out. They look like they just had... They have a cycling lesson in yeah. 30 minutes. <laughs> they just look like that, right? And and so so you're, my perception of all these moms that I see that, you know, that are at the bake sale on time with, like, the amazing brownies, and you're just like, I have this Betty Crocker box. <laughs> let's, let's see if how it works. But I would see these things, and I would say, like, gosh, I suck. First of all, I don't want to be a mom. And not only do I not want to be a mom, I'm not a good mom. I'm not good at it. I have laundry. I even said this the other day to the ladies, like, 
the laundry has been in the, the washer for over a day and it <laughs> smells really bad. Yes, <laughs> you laugh because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and I for you, and like all of these things that happen, it becomes a part of my identity identity. It becomes a part of you don't have what it takes. You are horrible. You're the worst mom because you didn't make brownies from scratch. <laughs> you are not a good mom because you don't exercise. You are not a good mom because you never wanted these children. And I would be at the grocery store, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and and I would be like, you know, pushing the, the, the stroller, the, the, the cart, and like moms would go like, oh, enjoy it. It's going to go by so quick. And in my head, my, first of all, my eye is twitching. Like, don't tell me to enjoy it. I don't enjoy this. This is not fun. You don't know. You know? And so for older moms, don't tell us that. It doesn't speak to me. It what a wisdom, what a wisdom. Tell us something, but not that. Yes, tell us, tell me that it's going to get better. Yes, tell me that it's going to get better. Don't tell me to enjoy it because I don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy telling them, no, you can't have that because we haven't had dinner yet. You know, meanwhile, the eyes like this, and I still have, like, the frozen aisle to go down and all these things. And I went home, and I was like, gosh, you know, everyone's always telling me to enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. And I would bump into moms of, like, teenagers, and I would be like, so what's better, the mom of a teenager or the mom of a toddler? You know, which one's easier? Which one's easier? Because I feel like I would be a better teenager mom than a toddler mom. And one time God said to me, that's not your season. Mm -hmm. that, that's, your season is this. And the enemy had made me think so much because he wanted me to miss my season. He wanted me to look at that season and that lane and that person running and that person doing that thing. That I missed, I missed this season. I miss their first steps. I miss the enjoyment mm -hmm. of making food for them. I miss the enjoyment of them, you know, learning and watching them grow and all these things. And the beautiful thing about God, because he's so beautiful, and Ecclesiastes. So the book of Ecclesiastes, the, the, the author Solomon, he goes through the whole thing of like, there's a time for this, there's a time for that, there's a time for all these things. It says, God has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He's also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose and a human heart, a serious longing which nothing under the sun could satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, or grasp what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning. God has made everything beautiful, and this ugly season is beautiful in God's eyes. This season of my little kids, this season of them fighting for the remote, the Wii controller, all of those things, God made it for me. And if I miss it, I'm, I'm not going to be a good teenager mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, if I don't learn what God has set for me here now, I, I have missed. And if I can grasp eternity, and it's not like eternity, like think eternal minded and think <laughs> of the kingdom. No, think with a purpose. God created me with a purpose. And my purpose right now is to make sure that these little kids know Jesus. Last week was Teacher Appreciation Week. Oh, my gosh. All these kids had flowers and cards and things. I was like, oh, crap. She liked peanut M&Ms. I'm going to get the teacher peanut M&Ms. And I felt so bad for my kid. I felt so because I know that it's important to him. So I was like, you know what? I can't miss this. I have to be involved. I have to be present. I have to be aware because my kid needs me to be present and aware so that he can partake in the fun things that all the other kids partake in. Just because I don't feel like it, it's not about me right now. It's not about how I feel right now. It's that God gave me this, this, uh, this purpose and this season, and these are my kids that he gave to me, he gifted to me that you had said earlier. And if I don't cherish it and if I don't take care of it, I have not done well with what God has given me. Yeah. That good. is awesome. So late, there's a process, and we got to enjoy every step of the process. And we can't skip a step in the process because if we try to skip it, then we are going to have to go back and redo it again, and it's going to be ten times worse. Let me just yes. tell you that. So, yeah. Pastor Virginia, you actually mothered in the church, yes. in the public eye. Very and much. you have two amazing, beautiful children that we all look up to and we're like, oh, my gosh, they're so good. Were they this good at home all the time? Uh, well, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, so, so talk to us about motherhood for you. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say the reason I do hi have highlights is because I'm a mother. <laughs> I have always enjoyed my kids. Uh, 
but I can relate to Sogo. And I think that's, that's the point. I think that's what the enemy does. We do have an enemy. And he doesn't want us to identify ourselves as good, as valuable, as loved. And I can honestly say for many years, uh, more than a decade, I, I learned how to parent my kids through books, through books. Uh, I became a born-again believer when my daughter Alexis was two years old. And I think I was one of the most difficult parents in that church. Uh, because I didn't, I didn't agree with the word. I was the most uh, quiet, but when they asked me my opinion, I, they, they got my opinion. <laughs> and I didn't believe in spanking. I didn't believe in, I'm just, just saying not spanking. I'm not, I'm not talking about beating up your kids. I just say spanking. I, did, I, I didn't believe in that. I took every class that was available at church. And... Um, and it was amazing because I thought here was a church that was putting all these events or all these workshops for moms. And um, I think it was only three moms that were there. And there were a lot of parents. But I have to say I was the first always signing up. Hated those parents' workshops <laughs> because I didn't want to be there. And it's not that I didn't want to be there not because I didn't want to learn. It's just because I, I didn't feel qualified. I didn't feel enough. I, was, I wasn't one of those moms that, hey, uh, we're getting together and, 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 and then you, you need to bake or do something. I hated baking. And uh, to this day, uh, there was a school that said, you know, Virginia, you don't have to bake, <laughs> literally, because I wanted to bake for the first time. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do something good. And so all my cookies, at the end, it looked like a flower <laughs> because they all like bunched up together. But they were so hard, and then they said, you are exempt <laughs> from baking. Um, and so I had to really die to myself because I wanted to, I compare myself to other mothers. And I always felt that my kids were getting, they were not getting enough, that I wasn't good enough. So I decided I'm going to read whatever I can from the Word of God. I'm going to take every class that they, they, the church uh, is giving, and I'm going just to read. I'm going to read because I needed to. I didn't want to miss any season of my kids. So I read, what do you do when you're having toddlers? And then you know, as you have two children or three children, they're, they, they're not the same. You think you got an, you're got expert when you have the first one, and then the second one comes, and it looks just like you. And... And behave just like you. And that's my son, Isaac. Uh, so I loved it when I said, oh, my gosh, you're just like your mother. And as he was growing, I'm like, oh, you have the beauty of your mother. We're very passionate and very dedicated to what we believe, right? And if you don't believe what we believe, you're in trouble. Uh, but through the years, I have to say that I fought. And I wasn't fighting the good fight to be a mother. I was just fighting with myself. And one of the things that I have learned is do not compare yourself with other mothers. The only one that I'm going to compare myself to is myself. And I made a decision that I was going to, every year, I was going to be a better, a better mom. And the scripture that I always, I like it and I don't like it, it's First Timothy 6.12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Sometimes we're fighting, but we're fighting the wrong battle. We're fighting, we're fighting with the perception that not only we have uh, uh, peer pressure from other mothers, right? When I moved here to SCV, I thought this is like a, 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 a town, like it's a different town, right? Beautiful town. And so I wanted to blend in, so I got me my yoga pants, you know? <laughs> I did, I did, I did. I got me my yoga pants. I'm like, is this a yoga pant? Because I, I, I didn't even know. Like, okay, put them on, my, my Nikes and everything, and, and uh, pretty tank tops. I said, uh, I work out. Like, I never did. So I just ran to the store like that, right? So I can blend in. Uh, so my husband would say, like, why are you wearing that? You're not working out. Because I'm like, I'm part of SCV. This is what we do. You know, that's what SCV does. I've never seen it in the valley. You don't see moms are always working there. So uh, it's funny, but it's true. Um, so the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. And, and I'm, a, I'm a researcher. And 
as I was thinking, what can I tell you about fighting the good fight of faith? One thing that I have learned is that the grace of God is messy. It's so messy. Life is messy. Um, so fight the good fight of faith says, you know, there has two word fight and fight, right? The first fight doesn't mean the same thing. The first fight in the Greek means to enlist. So I'm going to enlist myself to fight. The other five is that you show up. The good part means beauty. Can you believe that? Have you ever seen a, a well, I don't like boxing because it makes me feel bad for whoever wins. I don't care. I just feel bad because it's bloody. Any contact sport, I don't like it. I pray for them. My husband loves MMA. I'm like, oh, why, right? But, but that's what I picture. It's not a fight like, um, oh, we're going to fight and we're going to have like uh, cotton gloves. No, it's not that kind of fight. The first one is we're enlisting. We're enlisting to fight what? And when I, when I read the word beauty, I'm going to tell you what beauty means. The good fight of faith, it means magnificent. It's just the fight where you're signing up for struggles, for difficulties. So that's the kind of fight that we're fighting for. To what? To obtain the faith, to obtain the promises. And the second fight is that you show up. The second fight means you are actually in the arena where we're going to fight, right? And remember, we're not fighting flesh and blood. You're not fighting your children. You're not fighting your spouse. You're not fighting your, your family members that always want to tell you how to parent your kids. I, I have been criticized many times the way I parent my kids. Because some people have said, you are extreme. Well, I don't care. That's your opinion. These are my kids, and one day I'm going to give an account. And people always say, wow, you're so blessed because now your kids, they love God, and did, they do love. They have chosen to have a personal relationship with Jesus, but they don't know the cost. They don't know my crying. They don't know how I had to fight myself, not fight them, but, but not only fight myself and what I thought about me and believe that what God says, like that song, right? When you, it says, I am not enough. We feel that we are not enough. Comparing myself at some point, and it took me about 10 years because I always wanted to be one of those moms that cook. And my kids, you know, they had to eat what I gave them. Uh, to this day, Isaac loves pancakes, but they're like toasty pancakes, right? <laughs> Uh, he loves my eggs because they're runny, but they're my eggs, so, so I, they love what I gave them. You see, I was the one who was stressed out. Your kids are going to eat whatever you give them. And I never for, forgot, it was probably 10 years ago, a friend of mine released me because she said, Virginia, give them cereal. <laughs> you know, if manna was enough for the Israelites, <laughs> cereal is good enough for your kids. And I was, Hallelujah. And so I bought the good cereals, and to this day, that's the breakfast, and we enjoy it. So I just want to tell you that we're fighting the good fight of faith, and it's messy, and it's lonely, and people are going to criticize you. Maybe your own family is going to criticize you. Maybe your friends are going to tell you, no, you're too overboard, but they're not your children. One day, I'm going to give an account on my kids. I'm not going to give an account on and children. I'm not going to give an account on, on Sogo's kids or Pastor Jessica's. I'm going to give an account on my kids. And God hasn't asked me, called me to be a friend. He asked me to be a mother. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I'm going to come to you. I'm going to say something first. And I'm going to come back to you because you said something as we were preparing. Uh, you said something about, um, you know, your husband was working all the time and about, you know, just being the mom at home. And there were some words that you used. So I'm going to let you say those. But I want to talk to every single person here today because, yes, I said this is for moms, but I am going to talk to everyone. I didn't lie. It just came to my mind right now, okay? Um, this is God speaking to you. Your place is your place. I was created, she was created, they were created, you were created for what you were created for, and that's something that God knows. That is something that he had predestined from before. For me, you know, it was, I, I am going to be a mom. You know, they are going to be moms. And I'm going to tell you something. If you are here today, and if you are believing to be a mom, keep on believing that, and we'll believe with you. Yes. Let me tell you that. And then the second thing that I will tell you is that I'm going to talk to fathers, I'm going to talk to sons, I'm going to talk to, you know, everyone around us, even to daughters. Find your place with God. You have a place with God. We can't, we can't, you know, have 
And I always say this, we can't complain about what we allow. So moms, allow our kids to do what God has called them to do. Don't try to do it for them. I love what Pastor Virginia said. She said her kids have chosen to have a relationship with God. After a certain age, you know, we can't force them. We can't sit next to them and force them to pray. They have to want to do that. We have to model that. If we are stressed out, we can't go complaining to sister, brother, tia, you know, everyone else. We have to go to God, and that's what our kids are going to do. And allow that natural process to happen, and that's where trust comes in because we have to trust that our children are going to follow the bible says instruct them in the way of the lord and they will not lead straight and if they do they will come back remember living testament right here yeah. to everyone around us you know to our fathers we we can't do this without you i know the the rhetoric in society today and our culture today is i am woman hear me roar i can do this by myself but we can't we can't. I am a strong. I am independent. God has created me. I have had fights with him about this because I'm like, why did you make me like this if I'm supposed to allow my husband to help me? And he said, well, I didn't, I didn't do this for the, for the wrong fight. I made you a certain way. But husbands, fathers, we need you. We need you to allow us, you know, to do in your own home, not compared to anybody else, but find out what your rhythm is going to be and live it. And then to kids that are here today, to our children, even if you are an adult and you have an adult mom, the Bible says to honor our parents and the Lord for this is right. Sometimes we don't have to, I don't agree with everything my mom says or does, but I still honor her. And if I do have something that I have to tell her, I bring it to God first and then I you know, come, come to have this conversation with her. I really believe that, yeah, you were talking about kids, you know, teens or toddlers. Yeah, we're not going to be, BF I'm not BFFs with my six-year-old right now. She doesn't like everything that I do right now. She tells me to my face, okay? And, and that's okay because I'm allowing her to have the kind of relationship that I want her to have to, with God with respect, with respect. But, you know, I do believe that we can grow up to have a relationship with our, you know, with our moms, daughters with moms, sons with moms, um, as long as we honor God. Yes. And if you don't agree with something, bring the word. Nobody can, you know, there's two things that nobody can refute, your story, your testimony, and the word of God. Yes. Okay? All right, that's enough for me. I'm, I'm, back to, I'm back to this, Jessica, and I'm Mama Jessica. Okay, so, Anne, talk to us a little bit about that. We have a few minutes. Um. You're referring to our blended family? No, I was referring to the fact that you, you mentioned that, you know, sometimes you wanted to have things in control and you had an idea of what you wanted and your husband was working all the time. So oh. you felt like a... <laughs> yes. Um, we work in the California film industry. <laughs> and so I am so blessed to have a husband that works and provides for us and all of the six kids. So as you can imagine, he works a lot. Um, but that left me feeling like a married single mom. Um, a lot of the times I had to make decisions on my own. I could always call him, but he was busy at work. Um, and then we got into, you know, I feel a little bit resentful, but I mean, he wasn't doing anything wrong. When he came home, he literally fell asleep on the couch or on the floor with half his clothes on or off because he was exhausted. And so God allowed um, me to see that and understand it and show him grace. But it was, a, it was difficult because I had all these kids that needed sometimes a stern man's direction. And um, sometimes we lacked that because he was at work so many hours. So I just wanted to encourage the, the actual single moms and those moms that are married and do parenting on your own or you feel like you're doing it on your own a lot of the times. Um, I know it sounds cliche, but really God is, can be that parent. God can be that, um, that just guiding light to where you need to go. And so I s didn't stop, but I kind of stopped going to my husband for certain things that I could deal with at home, and I just started going to God. And it looked out, like out loud in the middle, in front of my children, like, Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, save them. <laughs> Lord, what am I going to do with him? <laughs> um, and the kid was standing like right there, like, hey, mom, whoa, I'm right here. <laughs> We'd be driving, and I'd say, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just quiet this car so I can concentrate and we don't drive and go off the cliff and little by little the kids in the back would would quiet up you know <laughs> but I cried out to the Lord in my home it was an out loud kind of faith and I think that um, my kids aren't here now but if you they're coming next service and I think they would agree that they saw that in me that I 
cried out to the Lord um, in front of them, that they saw me reach out to God in front of them. Um, the ugly cries I saved for the shower, but um, the rest, the calling on God's name was something that we did all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, listen, moms like long showers, not because of the hot water or anything. We just like our alone time, and sometimes it's our only time to cry, okay? So leave us alone. Let us let us spend half an hour in there. And, and you know what? She has said something earlier, which I loved. You said that, you know, sometimes we ask our kids, especially when they're teenagers, and we're asking them to do some chores, right? But you said that you expected them to have a smile while doing the dishes. Yeah. And like, we're, mm. There are a few things I wish I knew um, then that I know now, and... Um, just want to give all you moms permission to not um, to release your children from smiling during chores. <laughs> <laughs> It'll save you a lot of heartache. I know my sister called about a week ago and was like, "My niece or her daughter, my niece, like, is doing chores and she's pouting and she's this and that." And I'm like, "Let it go. <laughs> they will never smile when they're doing chores unless you've got an angel child." Um, <laughs> But I think that that was an expectation my parents had for me, and then I just thought that that was the right thing to do. And I had to ask myself, who told me that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did I get that? Who told me my kid had to smile when he was washing dirty dishes? We and don't even smile when we do them. No, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. All these expectations that I got from my parents or from my neighbors or from my friends, um, I now come, I, I um, put it up against the question, who told me that? That's good. And if it wasn't directly from God, if I didn't hear it from God, and he never told me they had to smile when they were doing their chores, so... I love it. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, anybody that, you know, wants to talk to, to us, they, we will be outside today at our, um, you know, beautiful setup outside for moms and uh, talk to us. Talk to anybody. Come to come to Elevate Men for, for, you know, for all the men here, all the women. Come to Brave. Come to the meetings. Come to the classes. We don't do them just to have a full agenda as a church. We do them for you. We do them because we need this. We need these tools. We need these resources. Had Anne not gone to that reveal night and gotten that confirmation from God, had Pastor Virginia not gone to those classes, you know, had Sobel not been surrounded by all of this, we wouldn't be here today. And let me tell you that if you feel alone, you're not. You are not. And allow God to love you. Allow God to give you his comfort because that's who he is. God is a loving father. He's a protector. He's a provider. But he has his Holy Spirit to comfort you. Invite him into your room. Invite him into your house. Invite him. Don't. He's already there, but allow him to do something. Um, that is all the time that we have for today. I wish we had more time because we like to talk, but we are here at our next service and also outside. So thank you so much for being with us today. I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to ask all the moms, if you are a mom here today, I'm going to ask you to stand up. I'm going to stand up with you today. We want to give you, we want to bless you. Not only with, you know, being with us here today, but we want to bless you with a gift. This is for you. This is going to be a reminder of God's love for you. So every time that you look at it, you can open it when you get home, but just remember these words. Um, every time that you look at it, just remember that you are loved, that above all the hats that you wear, above everything else that you do, you are also God's daughter. You are his. You are his, and you are loved. And you know what? You're doing great, and you just got to keep going. So um, as we give those gifts, I'm, we're going to have our, our wonderful Pastor Virginia pray for you guys. But I just want you to take that away with you today. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, you know, to let God love you like a mother comforts you. Let him be your comfort whenever you need that. I know we said there's a lot of things that we have going on, but many times we do have these moments. We're not lonely, but we are alone with, physically with no people around us. But that's what God is going to be for you. Amen. Yes, and uh, I want to prophesy over you as a mother. You know, we, we, the Bible says that we can prophesy to each other, and we prophesy with the Word of God. And one of the words that I have is Psalms 46.5. God is in the midst of her. He's in the midst of you. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just, as a, as, just at the break of dawn. What does that mean? Why does it say just as the break of dawn? Because many times I feel that we are going through darkness. We don't see the promises. And I don't know where you are. Like, I feel that there's a lot of heaviness in some of you as a mother. I don't know. Maybe, you're, maybe you already have grown children and maybe they haven't given a call. Maybe you're a mom here. And maybe, you're, maybe you have a baby or a child in heaven or maybe you're thinking about your mom and she's no longer here. But I want to tell you that God loves you. 
that God loves you and he wants you to trust him. Wherever you are in life, he wants you to trust him with your family, with your children. If you're believing for your kids and maybe they're, I don't know, gone, they have been gone for a while. Maybe you have teenagers and, and they're not listening to you. Let me tell you, it's, it's just a stage. It's just a season in life, and seasons always change. And with God, we always win. So I want you to raise your hand, and I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you here for every mom. I thank you for their hearts. And Father, I just pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding. I just pray that today they know that they are loved by you, that you see them, that they are not, they are not uh, forsaken. You have not forgotten them, that you have heard their prayers. Father, let this day be a day that you will remind them that you love them, that you love them so much that even every single hair that they have on their head, you keep an account of it, Father. That's how much you care about our details, Father. So I thank you for their lives. I thank you for their children. I thank you for the joy, the joy that you can only give in the midst of whatever they're fighting through. And I thank you that today they choose to fight the good fight of faith, just to show up and let you show off in their lives. In Jesus' name. And I know if today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.